when I think of this vertical fear of God, this awe of God, I always think of two biblical characters. The first is Abraham. Abraham had staked his entire life on one single promise of God. That is that he would have a son, and out of that son, all the nations of earth would be blessed. Now, that's something worth living for. And Abraham tagged his life, hooked his life to that one single promise. But there's a problem. The son never came. Decade after decade after decade, they waited till Sarah, Abraham's wife, was way beyond child bearing years. Finally, in a miracle of God's providence, Sarah gave birth to a son. What a joyous moment. The promise had come true. And this this son would live and, and he would become that one who would bless the nations of earth. And then shockingly, God comes to Abraham and says, I want you to sacrifice your son. It seems like a cruel trick. It's a moment where life doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What would you have been thinking, men? What would you have said? What would you have done if God would have asked that of you? Staked your whole life on one promise, and now he's going to rob the son from you. Doesn't make any sense. And Abraham, as a faithful man, takes Isaac out, and they start walking toward that place of sacrifice. Isaac's smart. He's used to the culture. He's seen sacrifices before, and he says to his father, Dad, where's the animal for sacrifice? Abraham doesn't say, shut up and keep walking. He says these beautiful words. It tells you what has captured his heart. He says, the Lord will provide. There's a fearless man. And I love this moment in Scripture where Abraham is now building the altar and the Hebrew word that's used for what he's doing is, it's a word used for stacking something neatly in order. Now that tells you about his heart. He wasn't saying, I can't believe you asked me to build this altar, to take this son away from me, that I waited so long for you. Where are you? What kind of God are you? No, this man's heart is at rest. And he carefully builds that altar. He raises the knife, and God provides an animal for sacrifice. That's a fearless man, able to look at what seems to be unthinkable and not be moved. Believing that the God he knows, the God who has captured his heart, will provide. That's fearlessness. It's only ever fear that defeats fear. It is only ever that mind-numbing, heart-engaging, life-shaping awe of God and his incalculable glory that finally releases me from the myriad of fears, small and great, that can grip me and capture me and control me and divert me. And it's only ever that firm-hearted fearlessness that takes me from the wrong kind of model of strength to servant strength, to gracious, merciful, righteous, generous, just living. I believe the church is crying for these kind of men. I believe the family is longing for this kind of man. Our culture is in want of this kind of man. May there be a harvest of firm-hearted, fearless men who move out 
in graciousness and mercy and righteousness and generosity and justice who are powerful tools of change in the hands of the Lord of glory.